morning primary kids and happy Sabbath for July 11. We are into July already so much. Um, welcome. Hope you have a great time this morning learning from the Bible another lesson that Jesus has for us. And again, you can send your requests or what you're thankful for to me. Love to hear from you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for another day to dig into the Bible, to learn more about you, and help us today to somehow get outside and enjoy your creation too, because you have so much to tell us outside as well. And maybe we can find a quiet spot to just pray to you and thank you and praise you for what you've done for us. In your name I pray, amen. All right, so, um, I put on the list some yarn. So if you found some yarn, I want you to look at it and see um, how many strands, see if you can separate it, how many strands are in your piece of yarn. And um, what I want you to do is just kind of unravel them. I'm going to see if I can break one strand. Oh, I did. I'm strong to break one strand. I wonder if I can break two strands. Yep. Okay, but can I break three strands? I can't. You see what you can do with your yarn or your rope. It's very interesting. I could break it with one strand or even two strands. But the three strands in my yarn made it very, very tough. I cannot pull that apart. When Jesus went to heaven, the disciples were like individual strands of a rope or yarn. As they waited for Jesus to send the Holy Spirit, they prayed together. Prayer helped to bring them together and make them stronger. Prayer helps us come together and get ready to do what Jesus asks us to do. That makes me think of today's message, prayer prepares us for service. All right, let's listen to the um, story for today. It's called United in Service. Jesus chose 12 men to be his disciples or special friends. They were with him in the beginning when John baptized him in the Jordan River. Every day they listened to his wonderful stories. They went with him to the temple. They heard him explain the, the scriptures. Best of all, they saw Jesus heal people. They knew about whole towns where no sick person lived because Jesus had been there. Just imagine it, not one sick person in the whole town. Yet, in spite of all the good things he had done, some people put Jesus to death. His disciples were around when he was crucified on the cross. Jesus had tried to warn them of what was going to happen to him. He had told them he would die and rise again. But they had not listened or wanted to understand. They had their own ideas. They had thought Jesus would come become a king on earth. They had expected him to set up a kingdom and free them from the Romans. And they had often argued among themselves as to who would be the most important disciple then. James and John had even gotten their mother involved. She had asked Jesus if they could sit on either side of him when he became king, and that had made the rest of the disciples angry. After the resurrection, Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and some of his other followers. He had explained the prophecies about his birth and death. He had talked to them about the kingdom of God. They had finally begun to see that Jesus was not going to fight the Romans. They had finally understood that Jesus would go back to heaven. However, he had promised that they would not be alone. He would send the Holy Spirit to be with his followers. Before Jesus went to heaven, he had given them very clear instructions. They were to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. This time they listened, and they obeyed. While they were waiting, something wonderful happened. All the old arguments did not seem important anymore. They became united in wanting to serve God. The Bible says they were all with one accord in one place. 
They wanted to spread the good news about Jesus. They would tell others how he came to this world and died for all people. They wanted everyone to know that Jesus went back to heaven. They were ready to tell others that Jesus is coming back to take us to live with him. Prayer helped unite them. Prayer helped them serve God. Prayer can do the same for us today. All right. So let's learn our memory verse with a little sign language. Okay? It says, they all join together constantly in prayer. So they all... Join together. If you have somebody beside you, grab their hand. So they all join together constantly in prayer. Acts 1.14. Okay, let's try it again. They all join together constantly in prayer. Acts 1 verse 14. All right, so... Now, for our activity today, we are going to, you are going to get your paper and your pencil and your marker, and you are going to draw a church. And it doesn't have to look like my church, but it can if you want. You can make it look like this, or you can make a church look however you want it to look. All right? So draw your church, and then, oh, I just have to grab some scissors. Sorry about that, I forgot some scissors. Got my scissors now. Once you have your church drawn, then I want you to cut big chunks out of it. Well, they could be smaller chunks too if you want. And, okay, you've got your picture all cut up. Now go, one, one thing I didn't put on your board, on the board to get is tape. But that's okay because you can do your puzzle piece on the ground. I'm going to do my puzzle piece up where you can see it on the board. So what I want you to do is start putting your puzzle piece together again. And think about all of the disciples coming together, joining together to pray. So you don't have to join together um, to pray necessarily at a church. It can be in your family. It can be over the phone. It can be over email or text or just you know that someone in your family is praying at a certain time. So you pray at a certain time at your home as well. All right, I'm putting my puzzle piece all together here. You get your church puzzle all together as well. And just think about praying together to get ready to tell others about Jesus, to serve him. However Jesus wants, God wants you to serve him. And that can be in as many ways as we can think of. Um, serving God is not just one or two ways. It is thousands of ways that we can serve God. Because we're all different. We all have different ways of showing others God's love. And that is a really cool thing about being a follower of Jesus, is that you can, in your own way, tell others about Jesus by things that you do for them, by praying for them, by 
just your smile, your voice, singing, sharing, um, being kind, doing things that sometimes nobody else ever even sees or knows about. Um, but if you are God's hands and feet, doing kind, loving things to someone, you are serving Him. So, but that takes time in prayer. That takes getting to know God and takes time with the Holy Spirit to help us make sure that we're doing things out of love and kindness. And that God will show us things that we should do and people that we should help. All right, so thank you for listening today. Have a really good week. And maybe you can find... Oh, my puzzle doesn't look very nice. Hopefully your puzzle turned out a little bit better. And think about praying with somebody this week to um, get ready to serve Jesus in however God leads you to serve him. Okay, and even kids can. You betcha. Kids can be the best servers of God, um, best witnesses for God. I really believe that. So have a great week, and we'll see you next Sabbath. Bye-bye.